Oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 790. <laughs> Our prince has returned. JD is back from Mexican <laughs> captivity. We didn't know if we'd get him back. We didn't know if he was being held, if he was holding himself. We weren't sure of the circumstances. He had to stay a little extra time in Mexico. Details forthcoming. Uh, JD, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing great. He's doing great. He rolled up in this shirt, and uh, you would think Look, he he got this shirt on vacation, but th he just has shirts like this already. Party Crap. boy, JD. You can take me out of Mexico, but you can never take the Mexico out of me. <laughs> there you go. We got Shane Sparks. We got Ben Askren here on this Wednesday. What's going on, Shane? It's going fantastic. JD, are you wearing sunglasses right? You got the sunglasses up too? Yeah, oh, I do. Yeah. yeah, he does. You are does. you are something, JD. <laughs> I mean. You look the part. I give I give you credit because you pull it off. Just <laughs> there, I'm sure peeking out. I know I've asked this, Janie, like three times. You are what, 25, maybe? Yes, that is correct. You are 25 years old. You're the same age as my oldest son. I'm old enough to be your dad. It's it, it's like a midlife <laughs> crisis every time I come on this show. I gotta <laughs> ask you this question because you got the good beard too. How old were you when you started shaving? You you yeah. seem like you were about 11. Uh, this is an early shaver. I can tell. Uh, yeah. Not late high school. Okay. Wow. Not crazy. Pretty pathetic, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Jay, I almost, you know, I, I had a bad idea that was actually a great idea that I uh -oh. almost, I wish I didn't even have it. So JD's got a motorcycle, right? And yeah. I was like, dude, you know what would be awesome? And you could do this the way our HQ is. I was like, you should ride your motorcycle into the studio and like, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> with the helmet on and everything. Oh, and like, you could, there's room. All that, that could definitely happen. I don't know happened. how you get into the studio. Like, how do you open the door while riding the motorcycle? Well, it would have to be propped open. Ty, yeah, we could prop a door up. They do make door door holders. That's the least then, of our problems. Tyler would be yeah, so be pissed careful. once he got into the studio <laughs> think, and he'd definitely Tyler, run over some stuff and he'd be out. Tyler, weigh in. Would you, What would you have said if I didn't tell you, so you didn't have to have, it's just all my fault if it happens, would you think it's pretty cool if he rode in on a, on a motorcycle? Oh, yeah, we're doing it. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, see, Tyler's in. The issue is here in the in. studio with all the, the extra stuff, the cables we, and the TVs and all these lights. Are, these are just small challenges, <laughs> all easily overcome. It's just all about getting – uh, actually, the biggest problem would be the potential carbon monoxide poisoning of running a motorcycle <laughs> yeah. in this oh, studio. Oh, boy, <laughs> wimp. that's wimpy. But that would take a while. It would take a while. Yeah. And uh, what a way to go. Um, JD, so, just be careful on that motorcycle. I'm going to be honest. I I, I am so anti-motorcycle. You will not meet a more anti. I call them murder cycles. So just be careful on that thing. Because you know what we know about murder cycles? It's not if you're going to go down. It's, it's when, when you're going to go down. And unfortunately, nine times out of ten, it's somebody else. But it doesn't change the bottom line. JD, I'm begging you I'm to be careful. careful on that thing. And you that's and what freaks me out. Pantaleo you know, is another one. Makes me nervous. Your PSA this morning is brought to you by Shane Sparks. Yeah. Oh, dang it. Those <laughs> things scare the hell out of me. Like, one of my, I would say this as a parent. As a parent, one of my biggest fears, I would say top three, is that they come home and go, yeah, dad, we're getting a motorcycle. Like, it's like, no, please. So, well, Jamie, you know, I love you. So. Just be careful on that thing. <laughs> yeah. So that's, um, that's why you don't teach your kids to ride bikes. <laughs> how do you feel, Shane? How do you feel about the electric scooters in Austin, then? Yeah, that stuff is all scary. But I, I road bike, so people are like, "Well, what's the difference? You're on your bike on the road, and that's dangerous too." Just you know what? I'm going to tell you what, guys. It's awesome being on here with you guys. Life is fragile. We're going to have a good time, and I just life is so, it's just so darn fragile. That's that's what all these conversations always lead me to. God, it's real it's early here. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, you just life is you just never like not to bring up a bad topic, but there's a I live in Oshkosh. There's a family that it has connections to Oshkosh, and they have a house. Ben, I don't know if you saw this over by Sparta, western side of the state by Lacrosse. Oh. House fire. Four of their six kids died. Oh it's my like, gosh, it just, Shane! It just, it's just like ah, I know, I know. Sorry, guys. About it's just it's it's fresh in my head. I just found out about it last night, and it just reminds me. Like you just yeah. never know. And that's why the PSA of the day, Ben, today is just be kind, be nice to people because life's too short. So there you go, guys. All right. 
Man, there we Shane go. Shane Sparks Wisdom Hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, power um, minute oh. of wisdom from Shane. Okay, I, I'm kind of with you on the, the motorcycles. They freak me out a little bit too, um, unsurprisingly to pretty much anyone. <laughs> JD, I, I want to get I want to get you. You were on the ground. You were in Mexico yeah. between margaritas. You watched wrestling. You were around. <laughs> you know the, some of the best the world has to offer. What was the? Give us the behind the curve. We all saw they they cleaned up there. But what was the? What were some of the interesting observations you had while while there? I mean. What more do you really take away from a tournament like this other than it's a good um, team kind of team building, you know, camaraderie type thing where everybody is there competing, making weight. Making weight's a huge thing, especially for a lot of those guys and just getting in a competition atmosphere uh, shortly before World Team Trials, Final X, and then Worlds. Dake said he cut out liver. In his weight cut, and that was, yeah, that was, good interview, JD. Lean mm-hmm. beef from the lean, liver. Lean beef. So what? What? What is categorized as lean beef? Like, uh, is that like steak? So these are the questions you gotta get. You gotta go a layer deeper. What's, you're right. I should have gone layer. What's, what's, what's steak's got beef? some fat on it. I don't know. Huh? Yeah. So what? What? You know? What's lean beef? What part of the cow? <laughs> yeah, Ben. Would you, you know? Uh, I mean, I would assume that uh, there are definitely fattier cuts, and I am not a beef expert, but you can see by the stick, there's a bunch of fat on it. Some dudes love the fat. I think Look, it's I, gross. I'm, I'm, like, all, I'm pro all fat. It's chewy so. and uh, nah, get it out of here. That's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. Are you not a steak guy? No, I love steak, but when okay. it's like the big chunks of fat that are oh, mixed yeah. in, like I cut those things out. But some people like those. Like my wife will eat them, and I want to puke. Oh, yeah. K- Katie drives me nuts watching her eat a steak because it is like – she will cut around the parts that are not it's not the chunks of fat, just like a little a little bit of gristle. Any disruption, she's cutting it out and putting all this good stuff on the side of the plate. Any, any disruption. Any disruption. Any, the true. best thing I eat in Mexico? Oh yeah. Grilled octopus. Really? Yeah. Nice. It was good. What's it? Is it similar to like uh squid, calamari? Kind of, yeah. It's got that seafoody taste. Um, but this place was a, a Thai Mexican fusion place. So Hi, Mexican fusion. I love yeah. it. I love both of those things. <laughs> JD, can you take me? Yeah, and uh, and and then some lobster tacos, uh, like the fried oh, octopus geez. or the grilled octopus was like my. It's uh, all on the flow credit card. Oh yeah. <laughs> Shane, Shane's like, how can I get a trip? We get, <laughs> hey, we get that fifty bucks per day per diem. That's right. It could probably go pretty far <laughs> in Mexico. I think it's forty-seven. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> forty-seven. Guys, uh, has, has anybody on this show spent an extended period of time, like a, a couple of days with Kyle Dake in a non-competitive environment? Uh, we had him at a camp many, I mean, 20, 2012 or something like that. So I hung out with them for like okay. know, a day and a half. To me, he is the, he might be the most fascinating wrestler to me because of his discipline. I, I mean, his discipline is, and I just really admire it. I mean, I remember... I went to, I was at a dinner with him once he was sitting next to me and uh, he was like, he was showing me his phone and he was telling me a little bit about stuff he does with his like cell phone. I, I, this is years back. And then I'll give you a quick story with Dake. And maybe the more I think about it, this isn't that crazy, but I just, it, it, it stood out to me. Olympic trials last year, we're getting ready to do an interview. He wins, you know, he beats Burroughs and he asks somebody he goes, Hey, can you give me a water? And then he goes sealed. They bring a water over for him. And he takes the, uh, the the water and he pulls it up to his ear so he can hear it, the seal break. And I go, man, I go, you're, I go, you're that like, I don't know if I said discipline. I might have, you know. And he just looks at me, and goes, yeah, like, I, I'll never really buy into the. I don't know what I did. It was an accident. Like, I'm not saying that doesn't ever happen, but at that level, you better know every single thing you do. And I just. You were probably like that, Ben. It's my guess. Uh, that not that extreme. Listening oh. to the seal break, that sounds we we've had this have we had this discussion on the show before about like the level of par- levels of paranoia of certain people and certain coaches and how we I think we all agreed almost that some of them were a little bit too extreme to be mentally healthy. Yeah. But if you want to be the best, here's what I would say. If you want to be the best in the world, everything goes out the window. If you want to be the best in the world, you better be in a positive. I mean, this is a compliment. You better be crazy. You have to be. I I, I, so. I would love to spend a week with Kyle Dake and just I don't even have to talk to him. I just want to watch him because I, I just think 
That'd I think his easy. commitment to excellence is <laughs> is incredible. That I would could also be a point of diminishing returns. It's obviously been successful for Kyle, um, but say you couldn't get a bottle of water that had a perfect seal, and then yeah, you I could do, get hydrated or you know something similar to that extent. Say you can't get your lean beef, then what are you doing? And our, does that starving. affect you mentally? Does that Whatever, yeah. whatever, affect you physically. Yeah, versus I just, somebody who can just go with the flow more naturally and be very good. Uh, there's absolutely a balance of of those components because some people do exactly what JD is saying. If some, you know, if they want to be perfect and then something's not perfect, they they lose their damn mind and they can't compete well. Yeah. I'm assuming everybody on this show's got one of those T-shirts. Aspirin's rocking today. I'm what assuming. Is what is? No. Where do never, we get one of those? I've never been that's, invited. That's, 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 that's <laughs> distracted. No more, no more of these. <laughs> no more summer camps? Uh, this is, well, this is last year's. How are we so, going to make uh, winter champs? That's the only way I'm aware. <laughs> that's the only way. What do you think the most overused slogan on a wrestling t-shirt is? Oh, guys. You Let's guys, go. you guys are Hold gonna... my headgear while I kiss is your girlfriend. That can't be used enough. The, it's the most so underused. Weird. Wrestling t-shirts drive me crazy. They drive okay, so me. What's the worst one? What's the worst? Oh gosh, one? we we break oh. ours so we can bust yours. That, that's the one. <laughs> you, love, oh, you love that oh, one? Oh yeah. I love I lo- the uh, the classic terrible one is the uh, ten reasons to date a wrestler. I don't, no reason. Don't get it into anyone. But those were those were everywhere when I was in high school. The, the first one I remember. I, I remember being in first grade, seven years oh. old. One of the very first wrestling tournaments <clears throat> I ever went to in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, was the something the effect of, you know, uh, girls play volleyball, boys play basketball, men wrestle. I remember that one well, from being like a first grade kid. You know, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> there's I'm a, proud to uh, say I don't think I've ever uh, owned one of those cheesy T-shirts. Was it uh, most people play with some wrestlers have them? Yeah, yeah. That, that's <laughs> about <laughs> classic. Uh, I'm not a, in, in this. There, there's only one like slogans too. You know, team slogans. Yeah. There's only one that I love, and it's the same every year. Talk about Wisconsin, Ben. Wisconsin Rapids. Uh-oh. Wisconsin Rapids has the same wrestling slogan every what single what year. There is no easy way. Perfect. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect because that's what it is. No, nothing cheesy. There is no easy way. So, you know what? A a slogan that killed me. My brothers and I talk about this slogan to this day. I forget which team, but some team in Virginia on the back of their their team T-shirt said, uh, trample the weak, hurdle the dead. Don't stop till you reach the top. <laughs> like, how is it going to come to that, guys? Trample the weak and hurdling the oh. dead? I, mean, I, I don't know what and that's it, from, but that was on a shirt. And as long as we're at it along these same lines, as a broadcaster, more often than not, if I see a kid with a USA wrestling tattoo, I mentally go into my pin call because I know he's going to get his ass kicked. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, there's a kid with a USA wrestling tattoo. Get ready because he's going to get drilled, and more often than not, it happens. Like, don't get a no USA one has anymore. Tattoo. Like, no, don't do it. No one gets those anymore. You know, we no. we should power rank the greatest wrestlers with USA wrestling tattoos. <laughs> that'd Tyron be, that'd got be one. really good. I know Tyron's got There's one. There's some good ones. A lot of them go M- <laughs> went MMA. Chris Weidman's got one. Tony Ferguson, RIP. Mm. Well, he's not dead, but uh, <laughs> close. <laughs> I was he gonna say, did I miss something? He, that was not, a great. Oh, he got God, knocked out. Funny. Well, hey, while we're talking about Michael Chandler, who knocked him out, uh, we had a question, Ben. When Michael Chandler I don't walked think on, he's him, got a USA wrestling tattoo. I think he does. I think he does too. <laughs> that Where? puts him up there. Is it on his back or his chest? I don't know. I don't think he does, guys. I, I mean, don't I, think I, he I does. Live with the guy for a couple of years. Uh, don't you, don't you, you don't know. You don't. You live with him, Ben. No, I mean, I sorry, I shouldn't. That was I. I was on the same team with him and spent a lot of time with him. We traveled a lot together. Nice guy. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, he seems all. I I love him, man. He is. I mean, that when he fights, I'm watching. I he's, don't think so, guys. I think he's got the one. No, nah, I don't think he does either. Well, it's not too late. What if he got one now? <laughs> 
When when he walked on in Missouri, did you have any inclination you'd be <clears throat> become a massive MMA star? Obviously not. Uh, well, obviously I know MMA. I mean, what he worked obviously his first year. I spent a lot of time with him and another guy named Raymond Jordan because they both worked really really hard. Um, and so it was obvious that they had a desire to be good. And it was like never had to encourage them to work hard. It was just like they were there. They were ready to work. Um, and uh yeah so i mean there was there was obviously like hey they're gonna get a lot better because they're working their butt off and they're kind of all in so that was pretty obvious or you know i didn't know what it was going to lead to um yeah what's what's raymond doing these days raymond's just uh being a family man he lives in minnesota i haven't seen him in a long time I talked he's to a good home. guy he's a good good guy, good guy. Yeah. Yep. family man raymond jordan michael does have the silly i just i was looking at his tattoos he does have the silly uh the Asian character, I don't know if it's Chinese or Japanese, on uh, on his back shoulder. Those were hot in the streets in like 2004, <laughs> 5, 6. Yeah. You had to get some Asian ink, bro. <laughs> Are you even hard? Where's your Asian tat? <laughs> um, Speaking of oh, martial man. arts and guys who competed this weekend, uh, Connor, who's a, a flow guy who was with me in Mexico, we went out to watch the Canelo fight Saturday. We were all pumped because oh, we're in Mexico. No like, way. go to this super crowded bar and everything. And obviously, he was upset and it kind of sucked. And then this band comes on stage like immediately after. Like, he loses. This band walks on stage and they're just an 80s rock cover band. Like, opened with like Final Countdown. Oh my gosh. And it was just like, some total, it, was, maybe? <laughs> it was not the, the vibes in there after Canelo lost. What, the what, place cleared out pretty quick. Yeah. Well, you play Europe's the final countdown. Unless Joe Bluth is coming out, it's going to be bad. <laughs> uh, you guys better be careful. Better be careful. What is that? Is that your? That is like that is right in Shane's wheelhouse. Eighties, <laughs> eighties stuff is like I said. Toto. I mean, I saw Toto. That's the last concert I went to. But uh, air su- air supply is coming to Oshkosh where I live in a couple weeks. Air Ooh. supply. I listen. Hey, I call Shane right before right before you came on. I said. You know, we, I love when Shane comes out because I guarantee he's going to bring up some band no one's heard of and spend oh. five minutes talking about them. Air Supply was a great ladies' choice back in, you know, 86. <laughs> hey, Ben, you and I got to get together, Ben. You Air Supply? I've no, well, listen, no, listen, listen to this. Christian, Raider, you guys got to come to Wisconsin. We got to take you to Summerfest. Last oh, yeah. week, I got my Justin Bieber tickets. I can't wait. Bieber? June 24th. <laughs> Are you being serious? Oh yeah, you're all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, why you like his? What do you like his music? Oh, there we go. Look at air supply, man. Just, these, these guys. Oh, look at we'll these guys. Done. These are some rockers. Christian, oh, that looks like Elton John on the right. By the I way, I can't focus after this. We got to be done with this show. <laughs> air supply. Just you're going to see Justin. So you're a beat. What, what are, are the beat? these people? She. Shane, I'm not a, I, hey, dudes? I'm not a huge air supply fan, but they're in town. They're 80s. I'll go walk. I'll, I'll go. It'll be it'll be okay. I, I'm not dying to go there. Bieber, I can't wait. I, I can't, can't wait, wait to see Bieber. What, what are we talking about this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun to like when you get to Justin Bieber, it's like, okay, let's retrace the steps. <laughs> How do we get to Justin Bieber? <laughs> and Shane, why do you love Justin Bieber? I'm like I am my, oh. my here's my shit. Oh, I'm, I'll be worked backwards. I'm gonna try to read Shane's mind. Uh, here's here's my reading of Shane's mind. There's so many hot moms that are taking their teenage daughters <laughs> at just about the perfect age for you. Yeah. No, I just I've always I've always lo- I've liked him since the beginning because I just think he's super talented. I like uh, oh yeah, Bieber's Ben. I'm telling you, I might come drag you out of your house June 24th. It's a Friday for Summerfest. You and me, Bieber. At the uh, at the old Marcus Amphitheater, I think it's called American Family. Uh, wow, well, so, you go to Summerfest, Ben? Uh, I have obviously the corona was shut down. I, yeah, I've, I've went a whole bunch. Yeah, God, it's kind of different as an adult though, because it is like once you go back and you're like above the age of twenty five, you realize it's just a bunch of college kids getting totally hammered and acting like fools. JD, you'll be right. Oh, JD, I'm the demographic. You would kill it. You would kill it. <laughs> <laughs> JD's on kayak.com looking up flights. <laughs> so we go to Summerfest. We uh, might not get him back. He likes to extend oh, it's a his great trip. Time. <laughs> okay. Um, 
we're, we're, we're bouncing around. Actually, someone Tyler had a question wow. about Canelo. Uh, he said, Canelo went up and weight and loss. He's the current GOAT and went up to challenge himself. Wrestling, what are some major moments where guys have gone up and weight and had major success or major failure? The, the biggest success story is obviously Kyle Douglas Stake, um, who did it four times, and then he did it. Almost did it all the way up he at 86. Almost did it up at 86. People forget he beat Jaden Cox. One match. One match. And yeah. almost won. That was in yeah. Iowa City, right? In 12? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 16. 16. Yeah. 16. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, Burrow, I mean, so I, I was thinking more of like, and I guess I don't know if Canelo is staying up in this weight class, but I was thinking more of like singular attempts at moving up. And obviously, you said Jordan Burroughs move up to rest with David Taylor, which was really cool. Um, because there's not really a lot of that happening, unfortunately, in wrestling where people mm-hmm. go up like one time or two times. And I actually think it's kind of funny because you know, you know, Christian, because you deal with the grappling, like there's some of these tournaments in Jiu-Jitsu. When they get done with the tournament, they do an open weight tournament, which I both find kind of weird and kind of cool at the same time. Um, but, you know, we rarely get to see I mean, how cool it would be to see Gable wrestle Jaden Cox, for example. Yeah. We've uh, never got to see it ever. Probably never will. Yeah, probably not. You know, I think the one of the all-time moments of of the bump up where it was – Really, just a pure like, just just for the challenge of it was when Gross bumped up to wrestle. Yeah, that's the first one I won. thought of. Gross bumped up to. Re- oh yeah, yeah, there you go. Yep, that's that's something that I mean. When was the last time we saw something like that in college wrestling, where a number one bumps up to another number one, where you know they're you have the weight certification difficulty mm-hmm. in that that Seth had to Michich weigh in. Mitch and Rivera. Uh, yeah, Mitch and Rivera, Rivera comes to mind too. One. Yeah. Rivera yeah. bumped up. Um. Yep, that was a good example of it. Uh, he kind of got handled it at, at that point. He's another guy who moved up in weight and had success, though. Yeah, but it's like you um, did that Ben a couple times, right? Didn't you bump yeah, up to Russell once, Kish? Once I bumped up to Russell Roger Kish. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I wish that would happen more often. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah, that'd be awesome. It Happens more in awesome. high school. High school is a lot easier to do. 14, yeah. 14 weights. It's not as disparity, and and most of the time you can just bump a kid up and he can. You know the ability of the other kid. Yeah. Um, no, but actually, I mean, honestly, it's David Taylor. A really good match. Remember when David bumped up to wrestle Colin Palmer? That was absolutely huge at that time. Um, in in high school, it was. I think Colin was the number one, 140. David was the number one, 135. And they bumped him up for the St. Ed's duel. It was a I great match. I think Colin got the first takedown, maybe the first two takedowns. And David. Um, he got a takedown on a turn. It was an amazing match. Amazing match. Um, that was that That's was really you. awesome. Yeah, he's got it right there. Um, it's on our YouTube oh. channel. <laughs> yes. Boom. So, yeah, that was that was awesome. I mean, Colin Palmer was the real deal in, he high, was a stud. in high school. He was, um, yeah. I mean, everyone remembers his brother Lance. He was a four-time All-American and say finalist. Colin was was every bit of that coming out of high school. It just didn't didn't work out. That was a really weird era for Ohio State. They had all these like hammers come through and like my, like not even make make the lineup. Like Tony Jameson, Colin Palmer, this kid named Derek Garcia. Um, yeah, was that. Garcia from Washington? Washington, yeah, Pacific yeah. Northwest for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that that oh, those are good me- good good memories. Um, good memories. I'm trying to think of other examples. It really does not happen too often. Where the bump up. Yeah, I, I mean, I think obviously the the weight movement rules are relatively restrictive, which is not ideal. Yeah. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, that kind of is one of the bigger issues. Why people yeah, the, don't do it. The, the dumb thing is like, um, it's it's a charade, right? Because yes. for, for, for total, college... Total for for college, these guys, a thirty three pounder is is certainly getting up into the forty one forty range, right? And um, between between weigh-ins, unless it's a Friday Sunday yes. situation. So and even the, then, they probably still are. Or and even then, they probably still are. So yeah. the the idea that Seth Gross couldn't have weighed like one forty or one forty one for that weigh-in, and then yeah, that not, but that if he had done that, that would like literally derail him for a month or more from being so able to long. wrestle one thirty three. And it's so dumb because they're all getting up that high anyways. It's just like it can't be for the way in. Total charade, total joke. It's not a it's not a system that is actually like valuing or like trying to really prevent anything other than it's just it's just needlessly restrictive. So agreed. 
we could see it a lot more if it weren't for the NCA rules. Um, Correct. And you know, I don't want the guys to change. Yeah. But how would you do it differently? I guess would be my question. Um, I would have them certify the beginning of the season. And then when they, when they're during the season, (laughs) um, you don't have to bump it up that much more to make it reasonable. I mean, if you bump it up to, um, you know, double to triple what it is right now, then it would be a week, maybe two weeks. If you went all the way up, you know, Mm -hmm. because it to to your point is like how many guys are actually losing. So I tell kids this because kids, when kids start, we care, encourage no, none of our kids to cut weight. So when our kids start cutting weight a little bit and they're like 14, 15, 16, they're just totally clueless. They have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. But so there's two ways to lose weight. You can lose mat, body mass, right? Your fat, your muscle, whatever, by restricting calories, working out more, et cetera, et cetera. That is a slow process. You'll probably lose a couple pounds a week maximum, right? You're not going to lose a ton that way. The other way is, is right, losing fluid, which is, to your point, what – most of these college guys, right? They're 133. They're probably weighing, let's say, realistically, let's say 136 to 139, somewhere in there. If they're, if they're really disciplined, that's what their body size is. And then the rest of that is just water weight. They lose some water weight, they pop back up. They lose some water weight, they pop back up, you know? And obviously, Much if they're happened. undisciplined, it could be a little bit more. And then, I mean, the, the other factor, which you want me to be really specific, is like the amount of food in your body. Like if you gorge yourself, for example, you will have a couple pounds of food and hydration in there from that. Um, and that obviously, if you start restricting, can cut back a little lower. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't think you'd have to go that much higher because not like anyone's going to bump up like two weight classes or anything. So if you just made it like, <laughs> I don't look at one and a half percent now, if you made it like three, three and a half percent, like that would get you where you want to be pretty quick. Yeah, no, no doubt. Okay. Getting to some other some other good questions. Uh, well, Shane, I want your take on this because we talked yesterday about the yips, and I watched this documentary yips. about Rick Ankiel. Um, I'm sure you're probably familiar. oh yeah, you're you're a baseball. Oh, you're I knew Shane guy. would Shane. I knew you'd love this one. So yeah, the question was, can you get the yips in wrestling, Shane? Jeez. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, think about baseball. Mackie Sasser was one of the first that I remember. He was a catcher on the Mets. Couldn't throw it to the pitcher. Chuck wow. Knobloch had some issues when he was a second baseman throwing it to first base. Yeah. Can you get the yips in wrestling? Man, I, I I would think, I'm not sure if you get the, you know, it's, it's probably hard to compare the two sports, but I would think, depending on how you classify the yips, that there has got to be something that could creep in your head mentally that could do something to you on a wrestling mat. I yeah. I don't know exactly what the example would be, but so our take yesterday was uh, that you know throwing a baseball to a specific place is a really fine motor skill, and that wrestling, even if your fine motor skills were a little off, you could probably still do a lot of things. So maybe there's not anything as specific as that. Yeah, because at least because the one of the things too is you know wrestling's constant. You know what I mean? You're you're moving. Where when it comes to like golf or baseball, I mean, there's like you got literally seconds to think about it. Like, you know what I mean? That that that's yeah, that's yeah. that that is crazy. What did you watch, Christian? Where I'd love to see that. What did you see? There's a there's a it's on MLB's YouTube. It's just called Rick Rick Ankiel. Truth be told, it's just, it's on. And YouTube. you remember Ankiel? He came up as a God was he a outfielder? No, and then he, he became a pitcher. I no, mean, that guy was opposite. a freak. Opposite. opposite came okay. up as a pitcher okay. starting as a 20 year old and then uh yeah tra- transitioned to after he couldn't p- pitch anymore you, it's not a one-to-one comparison but you could look at the yips as like either practice room national champs who couldn't perform in competition or guys regular season champs who couldn't perform postseason yeah how yeah, much i mean that'd be that'd be similar ben i'm curious how it, during your time at Missouri and maybe even at AWA, how many different times did you see a guy that was like, oh my gosh, how can we unlock this in the uh, in the competition area? Why are we not um, seeing this here? Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely some. Um, yeah, actually, I was just talking about um, a book to some kids yesterday. And uh, the example, would be, it's funny, the example would be like a Yips example, right? Is that... Um, uh, 
the example was, hey, if I lay this two by four down, uh, two by four by eight feet, right, and you got to walk across it, it's on the grass. Um, who who's willing to do it, right? And everyone's like, oh, me, me, me. It's so easy, right? Mm-hmm. And then everyone's like, oh, okay. Now, what if I put it fifty feet in the air? Now, who who wants to do it? Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, oh, and it's like, well, no one was thinking about it when it was on the ground because there was there was no risk to it. But also, it was it really wasn't hard. Like you're walking across a two by four. It's very very simple. Um, and so, you know, the way I use this also is in wrestling, a lot of people think about the, the things that aren't wrestling. So like, if you're walking across a two by four, you should be literally thinking about, Hey, how do I stay on the board? How do I put one foot in front of the other? Not like, Holy shit. What if I fall? That's not yeah. going to help you walk across a two by four. And that's literally what some kids are doing in matches. Like, man, if I, it, during the match, like if I lose, then I'm going go to the wrestle backs and then my dad's going to be mad. And then I got to wrestle this guy. And then it's like, dude, just freaking think about a single leg. That's it. Keep it simple. Kiss. Kiss. Keep it simple, um, stupid. Did ha uh, high school versus college, did you see it more or less uh at, on a percentage basis? Is it very rare? Uh I would probably say less. I, I yeah, I would just say less because I think a lot of kids by that point have been in higher level competitions. Um, and then a lot of those people who struggled so because if you struggled that much with it, lots of times there's a lot, there is a lot of anxiety around it. And so you maybe have been weeded out because it, it will not give you an enjoyment. If you have so much anxiety built up around, yeah. and this is what we talk about dads who are too, who are too hard on their kids um, because then the kid is literally thinking like, dude, if I lose, my dad's going to be such a dick to me. Man. And uh, for, I mean, legit. And then there, um, you know, it, it creates a ton of anxiety around the competition. Whereas like, I don't know, I think it's slightly because I'm t- I was telling this kid yesterday because they started grilling me that the kids I was talking to started grilling me. I don't know why. I, I think in lots of things, I maybe got lucky because it wasn't like I had a sports psychologist guiding me, right? It was just like I ended up with some of the right answers. But it was like in my big competitions, like I freaking loved them. Like the walk, like if you told me tomorrow, Ben, you get to walk to the octagon, like the walk, right? The walk part or the walk to the NCAA finals. Man, it is like it is so thoroughly enjoyable to me because it's like for me, it's like I get an opportunity to show everyone what I've been working on. I get an opportunity to go win this match or win this fight or win whatever versus a lot of people, right, are having the opposite is like, oh, my God, what if I lose? Oh, my God, this is going to be so terrible. This could happen. That could happen. All these bad things. And like, so like, I don't know how I stumbled on that thought process, but I can tell you from uh, when I've been younger, right, and well, I suck, so I wasn't, I wasn't walking to any mats of any importance early on but as i got older and i started doing it more and more it was like a thorough excitement like i was freaking excited to go try to have the opportunity to win whatever i was doing yeah you you hear that with um like dake has talked about that too he literally only gets excited when when he's about to compete um yeah yeah that's a it's an interesting advantage for for the athletes that can figure it out and and handle that um man i saw a master master class of what not to do with with kids yesterday Uh at caleb's baseball game they were playing this team he is so lucky with the coaches he has that but they they created so much anxiety it was making me anxious for the kids and the kids are crying (laughs) and freaking out and yelling at the umps because the dads are yelling at the umps and the parents are yelling and they're yelling at the kids and it was just like it was like just a, a master class of like how to not coach kids. It was really, so really bad. And it's Guys, let me ask you this. Yeah. Because this is, I'm all about competition and intensity, whatever else. But but you know what I'm starting to think? If What's you that? question an umpire these days or a ref, you should be done. Like we don't have any refs or umps. Like they're, who who in their right mind would want to freaking do that? Shame. Why would you I literally, was just going to say. During this, Go during this game. The ump said, "If you keep on, I'm going to leave." Uh, the cops. What? What? Did you get ten bucks for this? Exactly. Like, I got. I got to get yelled at yeah. by these these idiot dads and moms. Like, I think why? it's getting to the point where there should be, at least at the youth level, there's no like you cannot talk to the ump. If and you know what, guys? Oh, yeah. Hey, if he gets the call wrong, like everybody, it'll be fine. Like just yeah. these these poor umpires. I go to these tournaments and I'm like, I can't believe. And that's why, yeah. again, little PSA, I try to make a point. I just try to make a point of it to, to, to thank umpires or refs if I get the chance to. Just say, hey, thanks a lot. Because it's like like you said, God, you made 12 bucks the last two hours. Go get yourself a, or maybe get a hot dog thrown in. 
Yeah. Like, just leave him alone. Yeah, Crazy. it was so, um, it was so bad. You know, I, I was, I was probably never a total dick to refs, but uh, I think that I think that having the mask on your face uh, during the Corona tournaments, that like maybe be like, why am I even saying anything? Like, because the mask, I'm like, ah, they can't hear me anyways. Like, why am I gonna say anything? Like, this is worthless. Um, so I, I, not that I'm perfect, because I don't want anyone to think I am um, in this regard. But there was a college coach. Will not say which college coach. Um, relatively well known. Some of the shit he was saying to, I was waiting for the next match at UWW Juniors. I was like, dude, like, you don't talk to another man like that. Like, if another, I, I, no, no one's ever talked about that. Cause if you talked about that, I would probably try to hurt you really badly. Like, Dang, why really? are you, why are you, yeah. So oh, it was so degrading and bad. I was like, why are you speaking to, and it was someone who I would say I actually liked a little bit. I mean, I don't have, really have a relationship with them, but I, I kind of think positively of them. And the way they were talking to this referee, I'm like, dude, if someone talked to me like that, we, and I've never been in a fight outside of fighting. Because people don't talk to me like that. If someone were saying these type of things, I would be like, "Here's my foot whistle, let's go right now." Wow. It was so bad. It was so it must bad. Have like, been bad. I want to. I want to fight the guy for the referee. I want to fight the guy. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and you know what the reality, Ben, is like. You know what would be great right now is if you said his name. Like some of these people need to be called out for it. Like, and I'm not t- asking you to do that, but it's like. You're making, me want, you're, like, making me, you're making me want to a little bit. It, it was, it's uh, unacceptable. I can, I can tell you exactly. I know exactly which match it was. Um, it was so. It was so bad. Yeah, that stuff is like. It's just. And I'm. I'm not. I'm not soft. I mean, I'm. You know, it's just like you don't it, like. Just give people the respect. And at respect, the end of the day, especially respect, when it's yeah. a ten-year-old base. If if it's an NCAA final, hey, there's more at stake. When it's a ten-year-old baseball or softball tournament, like. The kids don't even care half the time. You got mom and dad freaking out in the stands or the coach. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. A good- I mean, I, I, just, and listen, not that I'm perfect. And I, I do get frustrated sometimes with the freestyle refs. And I, and listen, I, I know the solution is to, the solution is to pay them more so they can have a full time living doing the, not, not full time, right? But it's a more desired position. Yeah. Because when you have some of the refs who don't, literally don't understand some of the wrestling positions because wrestling is evolving very quickly. And then they're making like the, probably the opposite call. And what did have most of them did a great job. Right. But in some scramble situations, they're kind of making the opposite call of what should be happening. And then they don't realize it. And then I don't even, I'm not even trying to be a dick about it, but I'm just like, Hey, um, you should go rewatch this. Cause here's actually what happened. They're like, no, I know. I'm like, um, I, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to get mad because I'm trying to be nice to you, but like you actually yeah. don't know and you actually called that backwards. <laughs> you should probably go watch it again. Yeah, it, so. it's tough and, and at the highest levels because you know there's a lot put into this. Officiating can obviously and has changed outcomes of matches, and that can change futures, right? In in some yes. instances, so there is a point where it is you know the accountability is important, but. Man, it's it's not with kids under 13 years old. That's for sure. Well, I, I like too. Major League Baseball. It's happened. It, it just happened like a week or two ago. Oh, uh, I don't remember the game. Umpire missed a call. He missed it. And at the at, uh, between innings, the umpire like gestured towards a starting pitcher and said, "Like, I got it wrong. Like, yeah. I just people make mistakes." I remember. I think it was. Uh, man, there was a. There was a guy years back for the Tigers was going for a oh, no hitter, I believe. And perfect I, I think game. It was a perfect like, game. Perfect game was at jo- was it Joyce? I think was the umpire. I Jim mean, he Joyce. Was, yeah, I mean, he felt horrible about it, but I just it's like hey, you messed you messed up. You know, you, yeah. you you made a mistake. You own it. And I think when you ask for a little bit of grace and forgiveness, hey, I, I think we can all. It's like okay, hey, it happens. Yeah. Hundred rather than you know, like you said, Ben, you know, yeah, it's it's all like in the approach, the communication, where it's like, hey, watch this, then you get a, a, a an official like, no, I, it's like that. If I was an official, I would just try to keep. And again, I don't officiate, so I don't want to, I don't have the answers. But at the end of the day, communication, the way you talk, this, I mean, you can say the same thing five different ways, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And the thing, the thing is, the bottom line is, okay, they're they're yelling at them, they're berating the rest because they want it to. They're trying to help themselves. They want their thing to go better. But the bottom, yeah. that it does not help. 
That's the main yeah, thing. It it's like, the it's, other thing is like some of these guys, this is a, this is something I do. I'm not guilty of this. I will, if the ref gets it wrong and it, it helps my guy, I will freaking correct it. I will be like, that is wrong. My guy did not do that. Or you've got the points on the board wrong. Stop the match. Get it right. Um, and and that way they know like no I'm not I'm not trying to cheat anyone here I'm for fair competition I, I don't want you know yeah. my wrestler to get an advantage that they don't deserve because the referee made a mistake or something and the funniest ones are when the referees don't realize that you're like speaking against your wrestler you'd be like hey um, that wasn't two for him that was two for the other guy and they're like oh and you're like guys it's not even my guy I'm like I'm telling you just I want you to get it right. Yeah, because my guy didn't do that, and they'll get yeah. mad at you, and then they'll they'll finally then realize like uh, that you're trying to just do the right thing. Yes, yes, yeah. And, and I think too, if you're, a, I've always thought this too. Chipper Jones, my favorite baseball player. Uh, Chipper didn't argue much. Didn't argue much, and you can be this with any sport. If I'm an if I'm an official, and I'm refing, and there are certain coaches that are on me twenty four seven, you know, the whole time. It's white noise. But if I'm roughing and there's a coach that doesn't say a lot, when That's... he does say something, and I've talked to officials about this, and it, it's it's true. It makes sense. Like, so-and-so says something. It's like, he doesn't say a whole lot. So when he does, well, that's, that's he's probably got something. I was going to bring up that exact point. Like, you watch Kale in their corner. It's like. He doesn't say much. It's he very doesn't say rare. Much. But they yep. basically don't miss. And their challenges, yep. their pretty spot on that when they pick their spots and when they have their, it's like, it's not the constant white noise. It's just like, they're, they're tactical about it. It's not just a constant, you know, string of, and because I hear, and that's part of it too. Like there's so much. Cause like when you're Matt's side, you, you hear it all. Just like Ben was talking about, like I remember being at CKLV and it's like, these coaches are they're actually they don't even know the rules they're talking about. Right? They're they're actually wrong. And so how are you gonna get but they're just because they constantly talk, some of them they're like narrating the entire thing to the ref, what's happening, and they get so much wrong. So then it's like now you now you're losing total credibility. Yeah. Right? Because yep. it's like, no, it's like, coach, that's not the rule. There's no count in this scenario. But you just want to start yeah. counting or and, and all this stuff. So it's um it's a boy who cried wolf scenario. Yes. Now you I mean, even, even broadcasting, I mean, and you bring up Kale, best example, when he challenges something as a broadcaster trying to lay out what happened, <laughs> when he's saying something, I'm I'm a little bit on guard, like, okay, we gotta we gotta figure out what he's looking at because he's got something. Yeah. Where some guys it's like well, challenge brick about- comes out all the time, they lose it's just like, here we go again. I mean, you, you know, yeah. Kale Sanderson, one of the greatest minds in wrestling ever. Like he he see th- sees things at a speed and a level that very few people do, you know? So, like, to your point, when he sees something, he's uh, not always right, but, he's, <laughs> but it's a lot of the time. Yeah, pretty consistently correct. Well, that's fun to and, talk and Casey, about. Casey Cunningham, I mean, obviously that whole staff, they just they just don't miss much. No. I mean, mm-hmm. they just... Yeah, K- Casey's on point for sure. The, uh, the, the youth official thing has gotten so bad that I know here in Texas – they're starting to have to move football games off off of Friday nights, yeah. just so that they can like have officials to officiate games. Well, Why we were Ben. You were at the because state tournament no this last weekend in the Dallas, right? Officials, so yeah. these officials are oh. officiating games on Friday, and they're like, "We don't have officials, so you have to play on Thursday." Yeah, so that at the, at the, at the Wisconsin Wrestling Federation freestyle and Greco tournament this past weekend, uh, there were officials there from Ohio. Minnesota, like I'm like, what? Like that, I think that, that's pretty normal though, Shane. That surprised me a little bit. Though. I was like, really? There's not enough in, in the states and um no, I, but think I know there's a ton of mats there too, I guess. Well, maybe. no, no, but I think they do that like in the Wisconsin guys go to Minnesota and Illinois, like they kind of mix it up. Okay. Um they have some of the better guys from Illinois or Minnesota come in. Um, you know who does a really good job that aren't even I don't say not I don't say not real refs, but like the college guys slash older high school guys that um, are like just they just do it for a couple weekends in the spring. Like they generally do a really good job because they they are closer to the flow of what's happening in wrestling. Yes, it's a yeah. huge advantage to um, just be in the in the sport. No, know, knowing what you're seeing. 
is such a yes. such an advantage. Yeah. Uh, that's fun, fun, fun conversation. I'm not sure how we got there, but I'm glad we. Did. Another PSA. We're all yeah, well, PSAs this morning, well, it's, baby. It's yeah. Don't oh, yeah, be a I, jack. <laughs> don't be a jackhole to officials. Just yeah. don't do it. Just don't do it. It it is bad. It was it was embarrassing. The if I night. ever get caught yelling at an umpire, I hope somebody comes up to me and smacks me upside the head for real. Like bam, smack me because you just want to look at some of these people. I'm and just go, gonna follow you until he gets until he gets out of line and then. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. There's just no. It's it's just oh. it's embarrassing. It's like. And the other thing too is you want to like look at some of these people at these youth events. Like, do you realize that we're all most of us are looking at you and you look pathetic? Like, don't. Yes, and again, I, I'm not I'm not perfect either, but I I don't think I've ever really yelled at an umpire ever. I don't think yeah. I've ever done it. Oh, I it's have. Just, yeah, I, I, I don't an, think not, I have. Not an umpire, but a refs. It's bad. <laughs> um, you learn. Um, all right, another question. I I like this question. Could Colton Schultz win the freestyle spot over Gwiz if he entered? I'm not sure he could, but I want to see it. Let's go, Colton Schultz. Yeah, that'd be fun to watch. I think, I think he's a uh, has the template to do it. Um, I don't know if he would because Gwiz is savvy, and there's a there's a different level from NCAA's making the finals to what Gwiz has done year in year out. But yeah, absolutely. when you look at the the guys that have given Nick trouble. You think about the Zare, and Colton Schultz is not Zare, so don't get it wrong. But I'm saying from a template beefy perspective, though. beefy boy, underhooks, move you around. That's yeah. what Colton's going to do. And then he's ready for you to shoot under there. Now, Gwiz is one of the most effective finishers we've seen, but Adam Kuhn didn't have the sprawl, down-blocking skills that I think Colton probably has. Yeah. Um, so I honestly think if Kirk Fleet's not going, if – if Mason and no Gable, um, uh, I think that Colton would be the biggest challenge to Gwiz if he entered. Now, he's a, a pretty heavy favorite to make the Greco team, so I don't see him. But so he would have a but he has a bye to the finals at Greco, correct? Um, I think so. You don't need a day off, Colton. Like get some wrestling the day before. Man, that a would little be... practice, a few reps. Yeah, it would be. It would be interesting if he, if he did. Um, I'm trying to find the trials qualifier list, and I can't find it. Well, he's qualified so, because he got top three at NCAA. Yeah, no, no, but I'm just trying to see who else is – who else would be in his it's bracket. Like, it's like Hayden Zilmer, Don Bradley. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's gonna have, he's definitely not a lock to make the finals, but I think there's potential there. Yeah. It, it's not – it would not be an easy matchup for sure. Yeah. Um, have you guys – Oh, where's this one question? Um, considering the recent Barrero news, which is, you know, Ismail Barrero defecting from Cuba, who would be your pick if you could steal one active international wrestler to be on Team USA? I know it. Well, it's okay. got to be our weakest weight, so... Musakayev! We gas him up. <laughs> we bring him over. Stop. 65. Stop. Musakayev stop. ends the streak. You stop! Can you imagine how glorious that be? I don't want Musakayev on our team. Coward. Musakayev with a gas tank. Think about it. How it's are you not... going to gas tank him, Christian? Well, Do you think no one's thought of that before? Like, hey, you get so tired, you fall over. <laughs> How about we make you not get so tired, you fall over? Like, is this here's... the most brilliant thought ever? Okay, okay here's 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 what you got to do. I don't know how familiar you are with the Britney Spears situation, but you've got to get him over here, and you have to get a conservatorship over him. Then you control every aspect of his life, and then he gets in shape. And then he brings glory to America. I don't think he would be as good if he was in shape. <laughs> he has this he has this incredible desperation in the first ninety seconds of a match that, that would go away if he uh, if he had some cardiovascular ability. That is a that is a potential theory. Um so is, I mean, his Brittany fast twitch muscles. Way, is is Britney free, by the way? Is that I is think she, she is. Yeah, okay. but they're trying to lock her back up. A lot of the free Britney movement are what like, happened? wait, she's she's insane. <laughs> she's tur turns out she's Turns out she might be actually nuts. So, um, a lot of wait, egg on so Kyle Brackett's face. But I think we're pulling someone from one of three weight classes here. 61, 65, or 70 is uh, probably where you, you're wanting 61, to, to get I mean, they did get medal. world silver, but he's going to go down, right? So, um, uh, I want Abbas Kadzi. 
bu- yeah, get him a little young. bigger, have him in the streak at No, 65. you need to look at this as, like, wins above replacement. Your war. I'm putting oh, him at 65. Wow, I'm putting him at 65. Oh, the war reference? Yeah. I agree. That, <laughs> your credibility just went up. That was a fa- that nice. That's the line of the show so far. What's so the? Talk- so we're in the right weight classes, though, because, uh, well, now Gable's retired. Ooh. Maybe someone a heavyweight because Gwiz is getting a little bit older. We get a young. Maybe we get Zari. Man, if you get Zari, yeah. You got him for a long time. Zari's too. like 21, 22. He's yeah, young. That, that's, that's who you're going with. Because Gable's not coming back. That's who you're going with. Thomas Kazi is like my favorite, though. I want him. He is fun. He's, he's, he's really I, good. I'm taking, yeah, I'm taking the Iranian. Yeah, Zari's, Zari's smart because, you know, it looked like we had this insane pipeline at heavyweight, but I don't know if we do. Like, Gable's gone, yeah. you know, until. And now Mason uh, Mason is like slowed his roll down the last year. Mason or so. also undefeated against Zari. <laughs> One and oh. <laughs> Better than most. I would be David Bray would be mad if I didn't bring it up. Yeah, David Bray loves that stat more than any other stat. Yeah. <laughs> more, um, more than Abiskazi's whip. Colton Schultz, probably be Greco. Um Kirk Bliet maybe could develop. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, unless Mason Paris kind of gets back on where he was going. Yeah. Okay. Um next up. Here comes Tyler. Storming in here. Um that was a good What's question. That? I like that one a lot. Uh, 70 also would be maybe a good way for a replacement because no more is, JG. Yeah. yeah. Is uh is Strzok going to wrestle in the trials? Yeah. Because we talked about no Nick Lee and no uh, RBY. Yikes. Yeah. Nick Lee might wrestle. I don't think so. But he th- – okay, he thinks – I thought you guys said no. I said no. I'm saying maybe. Why do you say Maybe. Uh, he was down with Zane and Thomas at Pan Am's working out hard, and I just think uh, I'm I'm not a I'm I'm not a hard no. I think he probably just I if I don't know Nick Lee, but he seems like a guy who probably when he does wrestling workouts just goes really hard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just in general, I was like, if he's gonna do a wrestling workout based on how he wrestled, I bet he's just one of those guys that's kind of crazy about it. Um, I think him being in Mexico is like exhibit A that he's not going. I think if you were training for the trials, you wouldn't spend a week in Mexico and do that, especially if you're not wrestling. Like if he was wrestling, that would be a thing, but I don't know. That's that's my thought. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh I'm all for your uh, optimism, J D. Yeah, let's let's get JD's out. Let's put RBY in there. Let's get all of Penn State guys there. I don't think like, we're gonna why see- why why doesn't Nick Lee wrestle this? Yeah, why wouldn't he? He's graduated from college now. Zane did the exact same, literally I mean, exact same thing in 2018. I think it's part of their thing. I don't know if they're tired. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Maybe a they're si- tired. Maybe it's not a system. Hey, Nick Lee sleeps Nick a Lee lot. I don't tired. think he's tired. It's like nine o'clock. <laughs> I mean, Nick Lee had that great run at the Olympic trials last year. Yeah, I mean, obviously. I just. Right? We were being sarcastic, you, guys. Come on. <laughs> you could make the argument. It would not be the correct argument, but you could make it that Nick Lee should be the two at 65, two seed. You could. You could make that argument. Um, because he beat Yanni. Yanni. Yeah. The last time he they wrestled, last year. and he didn't wrestle at World Team Trials. But, yeah, you know what? It's like wrestling the events, though. That's why I said it would yeah. not be the correct, but you can make it. Yeah. In- We're talking about April of 2021 impacting a seed. I, I know that there's – yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see Nick Lee. I don't think we're talking about practice. We're not talking about practice. We're talking about the Olympic trials. Not a game. Not a game. (laughs) Not the world championships, the Olympic championships. Not a game. Virginia Uh, Zone, Allen Iverson. Let's go. Have you guys discussed the fact that Russians and Belarusians will not be invited to participate in the world championships this year? So so annoying. Highly annoying. I am not ruling it out, personally. Really? Come back? Really? I'm not ruling it out. Absolutely. By next fall, who knows? Guys, what what does this stem from? Like, why aren't they in? I mean, they get caught. Wait, I don't excuse no. my ignorance on this. Why are they not in? There's a war. Putin the war. Oh, cannot... that's okay. Yeah. So that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, they they basically been voted off, like voted out of the world in general. Okay, like, they're just, voted okay. off the island. That's right. Yes. All right. Yeah. So they they're not going to be. Uh... And it's re- it yeah, really stinks it. for like Dake. 
you know, who's oh, got yeah. uh, Gilman. Gilman can't get a guy of. Um, they really should have got kicked out for cheating well, is what they should have yeah, yeah. Exactly. that's why i asked the question i'm like i'm assuming people. somebody got you know did something <laughs> cheating again but we as we know with that then he just changed the name right yeah it's like oh let's just change their name it's like okay that that fixes everything and they so can't dumb. get sitikov or cutty mega cutty mega made up yeah because it's man Bowers and Russia. oh yeah duh i forgot about cutty mega oh yes. man v very Man, it stinks. I mean, it's the pinnacle <laughs> thing, and yeah, I wish they. I wish they, I would feel better if they were kicked out for cheating. That feels like it's part of the competition. This is you're punishing uh, athletes for things that politicians did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a hard. That's that sucks. Yeah, they should just say yeah. no. They all got caught with steroids in their system. Where, where are the world totally championships true. this year? Serbia, Belgrade. Okay. But then, okay, so get this. So in 2023, the most important world championships of them all, they're supposed to be in Russia, in Siberia, I believe. Yes. <laughs> so Let's move that. No one wanted to go to Siberia in the first gotta place. Gotta move that. Gotta move that. Can't, they can't host a freaking world. Expect, man. And the thing <laughs> is, that I, we've talked about it a little bit, but Shane, they were supposed to host a, a world championships in like 21, I think, but they got in trouble for cheating. So they, they the had important championships. They weren't able to host a, a world championships for a, a, a couple of years. So it ended up moving it to a way better world championships, 2023, because that's the Olympic qualifier. So okay. they still held junior worlds, though. Yeah. So I don't even understand. In the middle of freaking nowhere, because I want to go to that one and Ufa. It was ridiculous. Listen, there's not a lot of easy places to get to in Russia because Moscow doesn't host much and anything else. And why don't they just host things in Moscow? That'd be so much simpler. That's not the where problem? the wrestlers are. Yeah. It's like an hour away. Just put all the wrestlers there. Is like, it an hour away? Like, like we're saying all it's the wrestlers live in Las Vegas? Like that doesn't, they don't, no one lives there. All right. Moscow to Dagestan. Flight, so flight time, not drive, not drive, not drive. It's 26 hour drive. How well, many yeah, and if you drove like they don't row, it's to totally, it's totally Mexico, gravel. Is that a four if you drove to Mexico flight? City from here, it'd be a while, but it was a two and a half hour flight. Yeah. Uh, I, what, what is that, a four hour flight probably? Something like that. Three. Oh, yeah, three and a half hours, it looks like nonstop. Is that bad? I don't know. Listen, I Direct. don't know. Direct. Dagestan. Not even a layover. Dagestan to Moscow. Um, I don't know why. Who understand, Who can understand Russia? They will. So who, the way world championship, the way world championships work is you make a bid, um, yeah. on it. Like federations make a bid. So I'm guessing people in power in the Russian Wrestling Federation, you know, aren't from Moscow, don't care for Moscow. That's not where they want it. Yeah. Um, question from DJ Gillett: As a high school wrestler, what areas should be focused on when trying to jump levels? So I have a like follow up because that's a very broad question for for very Ben, right. but um, so I was listening to an uh, interview with Gordon Gordon Ryan, who's a jujitsu you know legend. Yeah, and he's coming back, right? He's coming back. Grappling event in mid. Oh, he never retired. Maybe? Come on, guys. Yeah. he's like twenty four. Yeah. So he said that what Danaher does when you're when you're working on something. So he was like doing some gi training. He's like what Danaher does is he starts with you're absolute, you working on your weaknesses first. Like that's what you focus on. You don't work on getting better at what you're good at. You focus on your weakness. Mm -hmm. um, is that a, is that a, a viable thing to like in by focus is mean like that's your focus focus. It's not like you're yeah. working on other things. Like that's all you're working on. Um, what are your thoughts on that philosophy, Ben? Well, I, I would say, I mean, I know this that's one, one or two sentences, right? I would say that they they could narrow that a little bit, um, and I'm assuming he probably did. Is like there's only there's so many positions you're gonna hit in wrestling, and and the worse you are, um, like say finishing a single leg, this is a very important position both offensively and defensively. Okay, like you should spend a lot of time on that for a headlock offensively and defensively. You should spend a lot of time on that, um, and then the, right there's some more obscure positions, which like if as a beginning wrestler you spend a crap ton of time on this really obscure position it's probably not going to be hugely beneficial because you're just not going to find yourself there all that much right as opposed to like or how do i get to his legs right or how do i stop someone from getting my legs like these really like simple things is somewhere as a earlier wrestler you should spend more time um but yeah absolutely working on weaknesses and this could be you know men mental 
physical or, or technical, right? Any of those things, we should be addressing them. And one of the biggest complaints I have about college wrestlers um, in general is, I tell all my guys, this is a lot of guys, when they go to college, they stop technical development. They just stop. Just wherever they're at, working hard is easy. Wrestling hard is easy. Lifting hard is easy. And for them, like, <clears throat> they sweat really hard. They get out of breath. They feel like I worked hard. I did my job. But over the course of five years, if you just do the same things you're already doing, how much better are you going to get? And the answer is not, not really that much, right? But if if every year you pick out a few more areas um, and become proficient in them because you're spending a lot of time with them, then by the end of five years, you have you know 10 to 15 more positions you're proficient in. And now, like, how much better are you as a wrestler? Because you have all these other areas you can wrestle in, not just like, whatever you were already good at, that's still what you're good at. And if you guys think of certain college wrestlers, there's a lot of them that are like good at just the exact same things that they were five years ago. So that's it. no new ones. My question off of that, Ben is why is it not, why do the coaching staff sort of not make that a point of emphasis then? I, I, I have, no, I have no idea why I'm not sure. Um, and obviously, you know, we see certain coaches are really good at development, but, I don't know. I think, I think for some of the coaches, um, they maybe value like recruiting or, or just like the athletes hard work more than staying stop. Hey, let's, let's, uh, let's figure out how to finish the single leg. Like you get to the single leg a lot. Why can't you finish it? Right. Let's, let's figure that out. Or, Hey, you can never get out of a leg ride. Let's spend a lot of time there. You know, I told, I was trying to work during Corona, uh, when our academies was shut down, we started way earlier with the college kids. Cause I figured, Hey, uh, this is not a liability because they're not actually my customers. They're just coming here because they want to train. So we, we had probably like, I don't know, 25, 30 college wrestlers coming in um, on a semi-regular mm -hmm. basis because we didn't have no, you know, I was bored. I didn't want to sit in my house. So F it, I'll go coach the college wrestlers. Um, but all of them, I said, I asked a simple question because we were like, hey, let's work leg ride defense because a bunch of you guys suck at it. Like how much better would your life be if also no one could ride you with leg ride? And yeah. I'm like, wow, it'd be way easier when wrestling matches because a bunch of them sucked at it, you know? So it's like, well, master that skill. Like, I, I legit feel like no one could like ride me, you know? And may, maybe there's one, or maybe a couple, but the number is probably really, really, really small and they're going to have a hard time doing it. So, like, master that skill. Once you master that skill, then master another skill. Then master another skill. Like, don't just stay with the same skill set. Taking it back to Donaher and Gordon Ryan, the Le the Lex Friedman podcast they did was super interesting. Basically, anything John yeah. Donahue does is interesting, but this one especially. Right, yes. uh, he said when he was teaching Gordon Ryan, the first stuff they mastered was escapes from bottom. Yeah. That way yeah. he could try any submission he wanted to, and he knew if I don't get this and I end up on bottom in a bad position, it's okay because I'll just get out and reestablish dominant yeah. position which was super interesting. Yeah. Cause yeah. especially if you know, heard, grappling like Gordon Ryan is a, is a very active wrestler compared to a lot. Grappler. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, I agree with that. So yeah, I, I just think overall skill development, building skill and not, and becoming proficient and you should have a coach that's um, maybe not too critical, but like can say like, Hey, here's a match. Look, look at this. I mean, and if you start watching kids, you'll start seeing trends of like, between maybe your whole team and then the high, you know, also maybe with specific athletes, like, um, Hey, like this area is giving you a lot of problems. If you watch a lot of your losses, this one or two things are really why. So let's solve those issues. Let's not just leave them and worry about getting stronger and in better shape. Cause that, that part's easy. Thinking about the, uh, the yips conversation and just basically that becoming a conversation about mentality and wrestling, how much of it is like, a sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy a lot of the problems they have in, in matches like i'm not good on bottom and now i'm on bottom so i'm not i'm oh, yeah. gonna just like they're just accepting the same thing with like late match fatigue but then the problem is a lot of them don't address it like they'll like in that moment they'll have those feelings right but then they won't actually you know because it's not like hey you have that okay so sorry i'm being kind of bounced around but yeah. if you're a really high level wrestler um, and you get your ass kicked once or twice, because you're probably not getting beat up all the time if you're high level, right? In in that moment, it's easy to have that emotion of, shoot, I should really work on X, whatever X is that's causing you the, the issues, right? Getting off bottom. 
But then when you go back to being a good wrestler, it's kind of easy to forget about that because that, that emotion does not happen a lot. And getting better on bottom is not going to happen in a, a, a day or a week. It's going to be like, hey, three months, six months, nine months. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a long time. And, you know, getting better on bottom, that's too broad. I couldn't narrow it. We'll say, we'll say leg ride defense. That's what I was talking about earlier. Um, getting better at leg ride defense is not going to take a day or a week and probably not even a month. It's probably going to take three, six, nine months. And who really likes freaking going to practice and say, hey, dude, throw a leg ride on me because I need to freaking practice. Like, it sucks. It's going to suck. Mm-hmm. But at the end of it, you're going to build a really great skill. Is that why you think uh, you see in freestyle, there's just some wrestlers that just like, Part their defense, they're just worthless. Like a guy will get on top and like Ooh. they can be so good. You know, you, you see it. I'm not gonna like you know. It's just like okay. how can you be this good on your feet and this good actually on top, but like bottom, like you just get you can just get gutted like crazy and you just have this like real. Is it because like man putting in the work on part their defense is just like so miserable? Yeah. I think part their defense is a pretty easy is an easier area to get better at. But yes, it w- it would be one. To your point, where like at the high school level, um, someone who's a really good wrestler is like going to be able to, I don't want to say ignore, but he's not going to get on bottom a lot. Right. So then mm-hmm. the one or two times he gets his ass kicked, like there'll be that emotion. But again, that that it needs to be like it's going to take a, a lot of time to get better. So it's not going to get better. And, uh, you know, oh, I need to get better at parterre. And then you're doing two days like that ain't going to happen. Yeah, very true. Very true. Yeah. Okay, another question. This one from Brian Murphy, but not that Brian Murphy. Another Brian, Brian Murphy. Murphy. That's what I was thinking too when I saw that. I'm like, is it that Brian Murphy? <laughs> no, not the not the Michigan man. Uh, who would you pick in a men's freestyle matchup with Miles Amin right now? And he lists a bunch of names: Nickel, Valencia, Brooks, Hydley, Miles Martin. So, uh, I'm curious for for y'all's opinion, but I think without well, let's go uh, let's go down the list. Nickel. Hmm. My, uh, I'm picking Bo. Let's go. I'm, I'm picking so Miles right Can we now. We set this matchup. Oh, right now, yeah. Because Bo, give Bo a month to train. Because Bo's also gonna have a size advantage here, probably. Yeah, if he had to come down to 86, though, that might be different. Um, I don't think he's that big, though. 189. Listen, I, th- I think Bo's beating didn't Aaron he just, Brooks. Didn't he just announce a, a fight? Yeah, he's got a. It looks like a certified uh, tradesman. He's doing another like YouTube fight. <laughs> uh, Remember that card third, he was on. <laughs> I, in this scenario, I don't think iron is sharpening iron. This is just Bo just like getting a a, a knockout. Yeah, you gotta do that. <laughs> you gotta do that a little bit. You gotta you, knock out some bums sometime. Ben, I remember your first fight. You got punched in the face. It it was uh. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, oh yeah, I probably shouldn't. It was on. Uh, it was it wasn't flow fighting. It was uh, what's it called? Pure fight. Pure, Pure fight with fight. Mark Bader. Pure fight. I Pure remember. fight. <laughs> That's yeah. right. I the love that logo. The blood drop. Oh right? my gosh! It was so <laughs> corny. So I corny. like it. I like that. There we go. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. So Bo's Bo's on his uh, tradesman circuit right now before he gets the the tough guys. Um, yes. It'll be a few, it'll be a little bit. So you got I don't man I don't know. Um, Zahid Miles. What did um, they have? Uh, well, They've he wrestled, beat though. Miles a whole bunch in college. He, I like, think he beat three, him in freestyle. When? Um, oh shoot! An overseas tournament. Really? Yeah, June of twenty twenty one. Um, wow, you got this date memorized. Yeah, hold on. Well, I'm just using the the website. Um, I'll find it. It was a what tournament was this? June of twenty twenty. Anyways, I'm pulling it up right now. Give me a second. But yeah, they definitely wrestled. I'm pretty sure Zahid, I think Zahid beat him kind of soundly, honestly. If I'm remembering correctly. I do not remember this match. Well, it happened. It's, it's, loading, it. it's loading in very slowly, and, and it's annoying me. I don't know if it's an internet okay. thing. All right, so, um, yeah. This is where... <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Zahid's okay. up 7-1. Zahid won 7-1. With, Where blo- with blonde hair. This is like Pelicone, maybe? Uh, Warsaw. 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 Poland. Poland. Rankin series. Poland. So, I found it also. 7 1, Zahid. So, Zahid. Zahid, yeah. Uh, Aaron Brooks. Mm. And free- we're talking freestyle? Freestyle. Well, Aaron Brooks got the last win, so, I mean, 
I don't know. Like you could obviously pick Miles, but you he also insta death them that match, which is impossible. You can't insta death them. It's all neutral. I don't know. I'll t- I might Miles may have a better chance. I think Miles is a better freestyler. That's that's without question. Yeah. Um, how many takedowns have they had in their entire like series? Like, well, not that many. I think not a lot. Aaron got like one four. in the duel, and then Miles got Miles two got in the two big ends. I think end. four. I think. Yeah. And then I think Aaron got one in the big tens versus Miles is two, and then. And NCAs, there was I think one takedown and a bunch of riding. So uh, it'd, it'd be be pretty pretty competitive match. Probably probably take Brooks. I think Miles beats Hydley, and I think he beats yeah. Miles Martin and Nate. But Jackson. wait, but Hydley beat uh, Miles Amin at the Club Cup thing. You guys should do another Club Cup. That was fun. That was fun. I would <laughs> love to. We love we love clubbing here. In flow sports. <laughs> Okay, especially JD. JD. Although only one of us is going to a Bieber concert, so. <laughs> Jay, what was the name of your band again that you like? That you're going Air to Supply. See? Air oh. Supply. Again, oh not a not a not a not a must see band, but a just a solid good '80s band. What is like one song that I would know? Uh, I'd, I'll, I'd have to go to their greatest hits, and I'd be like, "Oh, okay, I know that one. I know that I'll one. I know love." Here. Is that their song, All Out of Love, I'm So Lost Without You? I believe you're right. Yes. That's the corniest song it? ever. Sing it for me. Sing it for me. I don't oh, know. Man, I, w- I would love to. Um, Live in Oshkosh. Yeah. Wow. It'll, it'll, All it'll Out of solid. Love. I'm going to play it. Forget you guys. I'm, I'm not on the show anymore. I'm just going to play my <laughs> of... Making yeah. Love Out of Nothing at All. Wow. Yeah. That's that another sounds... solid song. You know, it's solid. I don't. I don't. Hey, I don't love Air Supply. It's just it's in town. It's say hey, I'll, I'll watch it. it I, I'd go. There you go. Okay. Take your wife on a hot date. I'll give you. Hold I'll on. give you Ready? the concert I want to go to. Like probably one of my top bucket list concerts right now. Tears for Fears. That one I want. That one I really. Tears for Fears greatest hits is freaking phenomenal. Shane, holy oh, crap! I just listened to that song. I'd rather stab myself in the eyeball with a nail than go to that concert. <laughs> What in the hell? It's a, yeah. Hey, I don't want to. I am not overselling air supply. It's in town. I go. Tears for fears. That one I'm going to find a way to get to. Period. Oh, I don't even. Oh, uh, you. If you heard you tears, tears for fears, fears everybody wants you... to rule the world. Is that them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A terrible song. Uh, everyone wants to rule the world. Shout. Uh, Shout tears shout, for fears. Greatest hits. Yeah. Fantastic. Man. Wow. Bad. Yeah. This is, this is some bad music, right Shane. This is some bad oh, music. No. No, yeah. Deviant, behavior. Deviant hey, behavior. Deviant behavior. Guys, don't tell me I didn't call this. Shane was going to come on here and talk about some very obscure rock and roll bands. Obscure? <laughs> These are big time 80s Tears bands. for Fears is not, they're not obscure. They're, uh, but yeah, they're not. It's not for me. But you know what? So they're for Shane. This. If you guys could go to what, what's what's number one on your concert bucket list, what do you Pearl got? Pearl Jam, for sure. Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam's my Hatchet number one, Christian. I, I Christian, you and I agree. That's my number one too. That's a For sure, given number one. <laughs> what, what's yours, JD? Uh, wow. Um, I don't know, actually. Wow. This guy sees more. I went to DMX than... one time. It was so freaking fun. We oh had the my best gosh. time at DMX. It was cool. great. That'd really? be good. Rest in peace. Oh my god. What about you, Ben? What's number one? Uh, I, I said I went Red Hat Chili Peppers, but I, I saw that. Uh, I don't think there's anyone really. I mean, if I can posthumously, Notorious P.I.G. or Tupac would be really amazing. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I don't think there's anyone that I really love that. I, so I saw Tom Petty. I saw Steve Miller Band. I saw Red Hot Chili Peppers. And there's no one else that I really like love that much. Okay. The one I'll never forgive myself for is I never saw Prince. I, I will never forgive yeah. myself for that. He's good. Man. We all live with regret. <laughs> What's that? We all live with regret. <laughs> oh, let's end with that. Let's end with regret. That's awesome. This has been a fun show, guys. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate Shane, Ben, and JD Great back. you guys. Next time, next time he's held captive, he will motorcycle into the studio. We won't <laughs> tell anyone. We're just going to do it. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. Much easier. Thank you guys so much. We'll be back 
tomorrow. Have a great Wednesday. Thank you and goodbye.